Good morning and welcome to Virtual Praise on this June the 27th, 2021. I invite you now to incline your hearts and clear your minds as we go together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, we are yours. We come as we are with our cares and concerns. We long to touch you and find healing in your embrace. Strengthen our faith and heal our brokenness that we may worship you with joy. Amen.
Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of St. Mark in the fifth chapter, beginning in verse 21. Here are these words. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kom, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Out of the depths of despair, we cry to you, O God. We are lost in a world of pain and suffering. When we put our trust in weapons of war, we find no peace. When we put our faith in our own resources, we feel the ache of our true needs. When we put our hope in the health of our bodies, we suffer pain and find no healing. Come to us, O God. Forgive our doubts and fears. Heal our brokenness that we may rejoice in your steadfast love. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers, receive this assurance of pardon for our sins. There is forgiveness and healing with God. God's steadfast love has the power to redeem our brokenness and make us whole. And in that redemption, know that we are indeed forgiven. Amen.
Almighty God, in our pride we have forgotten your holiness and your due as creator of all that is. We have failed to care for your creation. By your grace and mercy, Heavenly Father, forgive us when we act as if we were your equals. By your love and compassion, Holy Mother, correct us when we squander opportunities to care for your creation. Christ, our Savior, through indifference and hatred, we have failed to live out your gospel of love for all of our sisters and brothers. By your grace and mercy, beloved Jesus, forgive us when we create divisions rather than live in unity and love as God's children. Holy Spirit, in our addiction to busyness, we have failed to listen for your guidance and have not heeded your call to serve God's kingdom. By your grace and mercy, living spirit, forgive us when we turn a deaf ear to your call and when we act as disobedient children. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the shadow of death Your perfect love is casting out fear and Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back, I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with me And if my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, 
more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Would you go with me now in prayer? Healing Lord, there are so many situations we have encountered which require healing and restoration. We try to do the best we can, but we cannot rely on our own strength and skills to bring about the complete healing that is so desperately needed. Help us to place our trust in you. Help us to work effectively to promote situations of healing and hope. We have come before you with so many concerns on our hearts. There seems to be no end to the desperate needs of your people, O Lord. Yet you love and hear all of us as we pray. You surround us with your love and healing mercies. You, you lift us gently and give us courage to work for you in ministries of peace and love. We praise and thank you for all of this as we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O Lord. May your word be proclaimed either through me or in spite of me. I ask in the name of the living Christ. Amen. How is it that we define victory? How do we know what a victory is? Is it just simply the act of vanquishing a foe? Or is there another context in which we understand victory? Or is there a different concept of victory altogether? Well, certainly, I think we all understand victory uh, within that context of sports or anything else that's competitive, certainly elections and whatnot. In those cases, victory means that you have reached the top of the heap among your peers. It means that you are better at whatever the competition was than any person participating on that particular day. Now we also understand victory within the context of battles and warfare. Certainly the victor may still have sustained more casualties than the vanquished. And we know that one can always win a battle, but still lose the war. So how should victory feel to us? Well, it should feel good. Uh, in fact, it ought to feel very good. We can feel all at once pride, love, joy, exhilaration, relief, and supremacy. But we can also fall victim to our own ego whenever we gain a victory. We've all seen how professional athletes, especially in the NFL, perform ridiculous victory dances in the end zone or after they've crossed the plate that have become recognized and are judged as acts of taunting of the opposite foe. Sometimes when we experience the thrill of victory and the boost of adrenaline that comes from it, we don't remember that there is agony in the defeat. My apologies to ABC's Wide World of Sports. My friends, there is nothing wrong with victory. It is not a sin to be victorious. And the desire to win in any given situation is not a necessary negative statement about your character. I would just caution you not to claim victory if the contest isn't yet done. So what's the greatest victory ever won in the history of humankind? Well, it wasn't the Jews winning over uh, Pharaoh when they were finally freed. It wasn't David and Goliath, though that was an impressive victory. It wasn't even Rome's victory over the Jews and enslaving them. Nor was it the victory of the North over the South in the American Civil War or the Allies over the Germans in the First World War and the Second World War. Those are victories that stand on their own, but they are not the greatest victory in the history of humankind. That, my friends, is reserved because that victory is by Jesus when he was the victor over sickness, sin, and death. In our reading from Mark today, it's all about victory. It may not say that, but it's all about victory. Because just a touch of Jesus' robe and the woman is healed of her 12 years of hemorrhaging. And the sound of Jesus' voice is enough to bring back from death itself the child of Jairus. In this lesson, the outcome of Jesus' victory over sickness, sin, and death is healing. 
It isn't parades. It isn't grandstanding. It isn't taking uh, laps around the track for attaboys. It is healing. That's what comes out of it. In Mark 6, 36, Jesus tells the Father, Don't be afraid. Just believe. Just believe that your daughter will rise. Just believe that Jesus indeed has the power to accomplish this healing. And just believe that Jesus is who he says he is. When we are able and willing to do that, out of our victories comes healing. Healing of mind, body, and spirit. Now that healing is available to all, but only those who know Jesus in some way, shape, or form. It's not intended to be an exclusive club. That's not the purpose of that. Think it through, though. If you know Jesus, then you know of his power. If you believe Jesus, then you have experienced his grace. And if you share Jesus, well, uh, then you know he can change the world. Just a few words of caution, though. Do not mistake personal healing for corporate restoration, meaning don't believe that because you are healed, everyone is healed of whatever that affliction might be or whatever that loss may be. It is a personal victory and a personal healing, not guaranteed to be a corporate one. Secondly, don't consider healing as a reward that's reserved only for believers. As I just said, sometimes the non-believer gets their reward through being able to come to know Jesus. And that's where the healing begins. Do not expect healing from every small victory that you have. There may be some measure of, victory, of healing in that. But remember that small victories may be part of a much larger movement that will have a greater impact. So if you don't find healing out of each and every victory, don't be troubled by that. Recognize that perhaps there is a greater cause, a greater effort at work. Now, there's another perspective to keep in mind. Don't forget, if you are the victor, then someone is vanquished. And we would do well to demonstrate mercy and grace instead of boasting and puffing our chests up about victory. It may be that your victory is purpose-driven to be a source of healing for those on the losing side. My prayer for you, my friends, is that your first thought about your victory be that you pray for the vanquished. Before you celebrate, before you are awarded the trophy, before you finish the race completely, pray for the vanquished. I think doing so puts that high gloss finish on your victory. Amen. Shelter from the stormy blast and
And now, my friends, receive this benediction. Beloved of God, healed and forgiven, blessed and strengthened, go forth to be a blessing to others, proclaiming the love and mercy of God in all that you do and say. Amen. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I look forward to being with you again next week. Independence Day. Until then, have a safe and blessed week. God bless. Joyful, joyful, we adore the God of glory.